Welcome to Learning English with Captain Binoy Vanagal, Assistant Professor, Department of English, St. Joseph's School and the Agri Code Code, Kerala. Today we discuss a poem from A02 Ways with Words, the English Common Course prescribed for the students of the Colleges of University of Calicut. The poem is titled The House of My Childhood. It's written by Dilip Chitra. Dilip Chitra is one of the famous poets of India. He has written a lot of beautiful poems and the themes of the poetry of Dilip Chitra are life, then death and uh, madness. Let us have a detailed discussion of uh, the biography of Dilip Chitra. Dilip Purushottam Chitre was one of the foremost Indian poets and critics of post-independence India. Apart from being a very important bilingual writer, writing in Marathi and English, he also was a painter, translator, fiction writer and filmmaker. He published his first collection of poems in 1960. His collected poems were published in the 1990s in three volumes. He has also edited an anthology of Marathi poetry and has prolifically translated prose and poetry. His most famous translation is the celebrated 17th century Marathi po Bhakti poet Tukaram. He started his professional film career in 1969 and has since made one feature film, about a dozen documentary films, several short films in the cinema format and about 20 video documentary features. He wrote the scripts of most of his films as well as directed or co-directed them. He traveled widely in Asia, Africa, Europe, and North America as well as the interiors of India. He had been on the visiting faculty of many universities and institutions and a consultant to projects. He was the honorary president of the Santema Cultural Association of which he was also a founder trustee. After a long bout with cancer, the Chitra died in Pune on 10th December 2000. Nine. Almost all the poems written by Dilip Chitra are autobiographical in nature. They convey a variety of moods ranging from the lyrical and meditative to the incantatory. They reflect a continuous crisis of the inner life. Dilip Chitra in his poems had created a large intense world from his emotions, especially his obsessions with life, madness, and death. Dilip Chitra's poetry has a distinct style and he uses beguilingly simplistic words. His writing is sparse and his imagination is very, very profound and immense. His imagery is so spectacular and captivating. Even the titles of his collections fill the mind with pictures. The House of My Childhood is an autobiographical poem which is nostalgic in nature. The poem is set in the background of his ancestral home where the speaker spent his childhood days and he is trying to recollect the past memories imprinted on his mind. Let us recite the beautiful poem The House of My Childhood and explain the poem afterwards. The house of my childhood. The house of my childhood stood empty on a grey hill, all its furniture gone, except my grandmother's grindstone and the brass figurines of her gods. After the death of all birds, bird cries still filled the mind. After the city's erasure, a blur still peoples the air. In the colorless scrap that comes before morning, 
in a place where nobody can sing, where words distribute their silence among intricately clustered clips. My grandmother's voice, she was on a bare branch. I toddled around the empty house. Spring and summer are both gone, leaving an elderly infant to explore the rooms of age. So let's understand the poem line by line. The poet, in fact, uh, very, very nostalgically thinks the ancestral home where he lived his childhood days, his boyhood days. And now many years later, the poet is an old man and he has vague memories of his childhood days at uh, the ancestral home. And now he wishes, he very much desires if he could go back to or he, he could live those days again, those wonderful days again, those do days of joy, happiness, hope, friendship, affection, all this he got from his ancestral home where he had his grandma and grandpa. The house of my childhood stood empty on a grey hill. So verbal meaning and simple, symbolic meaning, implied meanings. So many years ago I had an ancestral home and now as an old man I remember that ancestral home. It, it stood on an empty grey hill. Okay, verbal meaning that ancestral home was on a small hill. But now, house of my childhood stood empty. Empty right now, that is present. At the moment, the house is not occupied by anyone. There isn't anyone. It, it is uninhabited. No one is there. And on a grey hill, here you have the image of a grey hill. The color of the hill is grey. Normally hills could be green, but now it's grey because it's after many years. The poet is old and the village or the ancestral home has also become old. And the old age is implied in grey color and everything is empty and emptiness and uh, uh, again uninhabited condition and desolate condition of the house is again implied through grey hill old empty desolate uninhabited hill so no one is there right now but the poet has a lot of vague memories. So the memory of the poet which is vague and the very house which is rather desolate and empty now is implied through the image grey hill. Moreover, the poet has also gone grey. His hairs have gone grey. He has silver hairs there and here. Now, what about the present condition of the house? He lived his boyhood days there many years ago as a baby, child and a boy now. All its furniture gone. Yes, the children of uh, the grandma grew up, they got married and they got employed. They settled in different places, faraway places. There was of course the partition of uh, the property, partition of everything in the ancestral home and all the furniture is taken away. It is divided or shared among the children of grandma and now all its furniture gone, taken away by the uh, children and except so some things are left behind. There are certain things which nobody wants and which are they except my grandmother's grindstone. Grindstone we know is the uh, grindstone. Uh, it is in fact the thick revolving disc of uh, abrasive material used for sharpening or polishing metal objects. So the grindstone is just there 
and uh, other than that so children do not want the grindstone because it could be heavy and it can uh, be useless right now so of course uh, we have uh, the modern grinders and uh, the mixers and all so nobody has taken the grindstone it is just uh, uh, left uh, behind uh, my grandmother's grindstone and the brass figurines of her uh, gods okay so grandma was very pious and uh, devotional very very pious and devotional and uh, of course grandma had a lot of idols at home a lot of uh, statues at home so all these statues right now nobody wants because the children may not believe in they may not be very devotional or pious so this brass is the metal in which it is made so the brass statues or idols of uh, Nadraj sometimes maybe uh, Lord Shiva Lord Krishna or yeah some uh, statues of uh, the gods is again left behind so the grindstone is left behind and the brass figurines are also left behind other than that the house is empty now we move on to the second stanza it's again about the passage of time it's about the condition of the house at the moment after the death of all birds bird cries still fill the mind so many years after right now the house is empty and similarly a total change occurred that is no more birds all the birds have died and that's about the kind of pollution contamination and uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, urbanization that is taking place at a very very fast um, very fast right very very quickly we have urbanization taking place as a result of urbanization okay the villages become cities and uh, all uh, now besides that we have again the climatic changes pollution and as a result of that we understand that a lot of species die out uh, daily as per the uh, data we understand that more than 200 species of creatures die out or rather become extinct daily so the reference is to such creatures and especially to the birds all the birds died because of climatic changes environmental pollution acid rain temperature rise and of course uh, the destruction of uh, the habitat for birds like the um, cutting of trees and uh, all so after the death of all birds bird cries still fill the mind the poet's mind is filled with those songs of the birds of the childhood days many years ago so uh, we have uh, uh, the reference to of course those wonderful days of his boyhood days he used to listen to birds and of course uh, other wonderful creatures like squirrels and uh, then of course he used to watch butterflies and dragon flies and maybe he had some pet animals and all so a lot of fond memories bird cries still fill the mind deep in his mind he has a lot of memories he remembers if he could have them again but now no birds no songs no bird cries after the city's erasure a blur still peoples the air now something about what happened to the atmosphere again the ancestral home nearby places the city's erasure so the city's erasure refers to the erasure of the uh, plants and trees and uh, maybe the environment by the city like uh, developmental projects a lot of factories a lot of highways maybe some airport maybe we have a very fast uh, urbanization going on industrialization going on as a result of that everything is erased after the city's erasure a blur still peoples the air so everything is vacant everything is empty what we have is very very unclear fading memories and that is a blur 
still peoples the air okay in in the in the background in the mind in the air okay we have a lot of uh, memories all right and uh, that is uh, under reference here a blow still peoples the air now uh, in fact, uh, in next line we have a beautiful uh, alliteration in the colorless crack that comes before morning. Similarly, in the first stanza, except my grandmother's grindstone, g -g grandmother's grindstone, alliteration, repetition of constant sounds in the beginning is alliteration. So, grandmother's grindstone here in the colorless crack that comes before morning. So, now uh, he remembers those wonderful days and it is colorless colorless again refers to the very uh, emptiness nothing there unclear okay so whatever you see today now you look out maybe you see th some things and whatever you see has color because it, everything is quite fresh and new but those days you have no clear memory you don't remember everything properly so it is colorless in the colorless crack again colorless because not clear uh, again desolate and empty crack crack refers to the crevices and the gaps and uh, all so every day maybe in the morning he remembers those days right uh, come that comes before morning in the colorless crack that comes before morning so nothing is clear there are crevices he cannot connect everything in a sequential way he remembers certain things and everything is jumbled or disconnected so it is vague it is unclear and uh, maybe he doesn't see everything very clearly so it is in the colorless crack that comes before morning in a place where nobody can sing now when he thinks of the ancestral home it is a place where nobody can sing now because it's empty grandpa is not there grandma is not there no children no members of the family it is just melancholy you're sad about that so such a place where you don't have bird cries where you don't have your dear ones where you don't have anything that gives you happiness okay how can you sing in a place where nobody can sing words distribute their silence and you go there you have silence there maybe you hear some of the words that uh, they spoke and maybe you have of course a lot of uh, um, memories and words distribute their silence Okay, a lot of words come to your mind and all these words make you all the more silent. You become sad and you are thoughtful and uh, you are walking among intricately clustered glyphs. So there are a lot of uh, clustered glyphs. Clustered glyphs refers to pictographs. So when you go to the grandparents' uh, ancestral home, okay, every room has something to say. Every uh, corner of the house has something to say and every corner every room every brick and wall in the house can bring a lot of images to your mind and that is the reference to clustered glyphs clustered glyphs okay we have a lot of uh, pictographs there images there and all this is just uh, bringing a lot of uh, images to your mind and you miss all that you miss those wonderful days you walked in the company of your grandparents a lot of happiness a lot of maybe wonderful experiences and happiness right and now you are very sad and you have a lot of unclear memories and hence colorless crack and uh, sorrow nobody can sing and there is silence everywhere okay now we come to the last stanza my grandmother's voice she was on a bare branch so grandma is not there dead and gone but maybe when he looks at uh, the branches of trees beside the house 
ancestor home maybe he can associate himself right maybe and he listens to rather from the storehouse of his mind from his memory he hears something that his grandma said many years ago that's why my grandmother's voice she was on a bare branch bare branch the branch is bare no green leaves no birds nothing it's just bare still he can associate himself connect himself to that bare branch maybe or it could be the branch of a mango tree or it could be the branch of a jackfruit tree or it could be a coconut grove and of course he remembers what his the stories his grandma used to tell him nostalgically he remembers everything and it is a, a bare branch bare branch refers to of course the kind of emptiness outside the ancestor home inside the mind of the poet grandma is dead and gone still he remembers whatever stories grandma said whatever jokes and fun and oh, all the wonderful mem moments he has with grandma my grandmother's voice she was on a bare branch i toiled around the empty house many years ago as a one year old boy or a two year old boy he toiled you know toiled toiled at first to the very moments of people with short unsteady steps like young babies and child so he remembers he just toiled around the house along with grandma one day but now it is empty house grandma is not there and he is still toiling because he is old he is old very old and he may need a walking stick he may need a walker and he is in his second childishness so many years after many years ago he toiled when he was one or two years then he had his ka, uh, grandma with him now after many years maybe 70 years or 80 years or 90 years okay he is in his second childishness he is in his of course old age and he is still toiling nostalgically remembering those wonderful days we he had with his grandma and spring and summer are both gone leaving an elderly infant so his spring of his life that is his childhood days summer of his life childhood days boyhood days youthful days days of adulthood all is gone and he prays unto summer and spring that oh i could if i could be child again if i could be young again spring and summer are both gone leaving an elderly infant it's an oxymoron elderly infant an infant cannot be an elder person an elder person cannot be an infant but he is because he is both an elder man and an infant because he this he is old so he has all the memories of uh, the past life he is elder all right and he lost all his physical quality his strength and fitness and all is toddling in his old age so oxymoron we have here figure of speech leaving an elderly infant elderly infant connecting two opposite ideas elderly infant it is oxymoron figure of speech to explore the rooms of age and now this old man elderly infant is exploring the rooms of age that is the ancestral home again exploring his own uh, uh, mind his own conscious and subconscious and unconscious he remembers everything so beautiful poem about old age beautiful poem about uh, uh, of course uh, the ancestral home beautiful a poem about the kind of uh, relationships we should have today 20th century or 21st century we have more and more nuclear families we have disintegration of families we have again the loss of relationships and innocence and the values of life so dilip chitre nostalgically bemoans the loss of his childhood days and the loss of relationships and values in the life of everybody 
a wonderful poem that uh, just uh, uh, understand us those days uh, rather many years ago we had values in the family in the society we we had closer relationships with uh, members of the family and everything is just uh, lamented in this poem house of my childhood by Dilip Chitra. Let's look at the questions, right? The first question, what is the figure of speech in the expression colorless cracks? Colorless cracks is k, uh, the consonants repeat, right? The consonant k and consonant k in colorless and cracks is repeating and the figure of speech is alliteration. So colorless cracks, okay? Repetition of consonant sounds in the beginning of stressed uh, syllable is alliteration identify the figures of speech in the expression elderly infant elderly infant is an expression of uh, oxymoron it's a figure of speech of oxymoron so two opposite ideas elderly and infant are combined in this expression elderly infant and it's an example for oxymoron figure of speech identify the images in the poem that suggest desolation desolation is emptiness or uninhabited empty condition is dissolution and emptiness is suggested through the house of my childhood stood on a gray hill gray hill is an image it is suggesting isolation desolate uh, and uh, empty then of course we have uh, all its figurines gone all its furniture gone gone furniture gone everything is again empty then again we have uh, the image of after the death of all birds death of all birds emptiness no more birds birds no more birds right again emptiness uh, and bird cries still fill the mind then the city's erasure city is erasure urbanization erasure of plants and trees and the greenery again emptiness a blur still people the air blur it's blur unclear Everything is vague and unclear. Again, again, colorless crack. Again, empty. So, a lot of images that, uh, yeah, where words distribute their silence, right? Silences, again. Uh, words distribute their silence. There we have, again, emptiness. It is, uh, there is silence because there is emptiness. Not even, uh, even, even any sound there. So, silence is, again, empty. If you have sound, it's full. All right, the air is full. But if there is silence, there is nothing. So everything, these are all images, beautiful images that uh, bear branch again, emptiness. Grandmother's voice, she was on a bare branch. Next question. What are the exceptions of furniture that the speaker talks about? Grindstone and brass figurines of goats are the exceptions of furniture that the speaker talks about. All the other furniture are taken away. Now the next question. Words distribute their silence. Among intricately clustered lips, explain. So now, as the poet is uh, walking in the ancestral home of his grandma, his childhood, a lot of memories flood his mind. And although he doesn't have his grandma, grandpa, or uncle, aunt, brother, sister uh, beside him, and there is no voice, there is no dialogue, okay, there is only silence, but there are a lot of memories and uh, he has a lot of, uh, he can hear a lot of voice, voice of his. And this is in fact, uh, the flooding of memory is under reference here in the poem, uh, The House of My Childhood. What is the significance of the color gray in the expression gray hills? Color gray indicates emptiness, desolation, uninhabited house, old age, and uh, of course, uh, vague memories, vague memories. And it also implies the uh, physical gray hair of the poet. The poet is an old man. And okay, gray hill is something like uh, his gray hair, his head. The hill of our body, the top part of our body is the head. So his hair has, or uh, yeah, all the hair has uh, gone gray. Similarly, the house is, answer to home is again empty. Next question, why do you think are the cracks colorless? The cracks are colorless because time passed, passage after a lot of uh, years, after many years, 
the point is in remember everything clearly everything is unclear vague and uh, the memories vanish and fade and it is just uh, colorless crack colorless crack nothing is clear everything is empty very vague memories and that uh, the passage of time and the forgetfulness of the point is uh, n n no sequential no sequential order it doesn't know what happened in maybe the uh, third year or uh, when he was just a three year old boy maybe he remembers what he was uh, when he was four years he remembers what he was when 10 years right maybe 15 years so it doesn't remember everything in a sequential chronological order and that is just referred to as cracks colorless why does the poet invoke the seasons of spring and summer the poet is invoking the seasons of spring and summer because spring season and summer season are uh, symbolic of energy a lot of rejuvenation a lot of uh, uh, strength and uh, 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 again growth okay so here now he has become very old and he wishes to be young again he wants to have uh, his childhood days he wants to be energetic again and nostalgically wishes for those wonderful days of childhood boyhood adulthood when he had a lot of joy and happiness and of course there was life in his um, life okay or rather energy in his life no uh, he refers to that uh, all those gone days right nostalgically remembers for spring is of course uh, the most uh, beautiful interesting days of your life and summer again your adulthood now he lost everything he's in his autumn season the maybe life can be compared to different seasons you have of course spring season you have uh, the summer season autumn season and winter so autumn is old age winter is when you are buried all right spring and summer are childhood days and youthful days now discuss the significance of the word toddle toddle the word refers to walking or moving with short unsteady steps like a young child so it refers to the childhood days boyhood days he toddled as a three-year-old or a two-year-old and uh, uh, now it refers to see old age old age is the second childishness you are again a child you cannot walk you are physically weak you are intellectually or rather emotionally you are mentally physically weak you don't remember everything you cannot work out everything you have uh, memory failure loss of memory physically you are weak you need to have a walking stick you need to have a walker you need the company of somebody to toddle around the house so refers to the second childishness of the poet it again refers to the the uh, days he walked in the company of his grandpa and grandma now we come to the next uh, uh, question paragraph question autobiographical elements in the poem the Lichitra's house of my childhood is autobiographical because the very title house of my childhood all the words are rather personal house my house my my again autobiographical childhood everybody has a childhood so my uh, autobiographical my experience my childhood experience my childhood uh, life my memories so the very title is autobiographical then the poem is about the house he lived in the very uh, surroundings of the house and uh, his grandma his grandpa okay he is also connected to all the furniture and all the um, uh, statues in the house okay so he tells us how he was associated with the members of the family associated with the house associated with the plants and trees and birds and butterflies and everything okay and uh, yeah many years later he doesn't remember everything properly he is old right now and when he is old he nostalgically wishes if he could be child again if he, if he could be young again all right so this poem is full of nostalgic 
uh, autobiographical uh, elements, right? And now, many years later, he's exploring the rooms of age. Ro rooms of age, again, helps us to understand that it's autobiographical. Yeah, I have a lot of experience. I have a lot of memories and I'm just exploring, remembering all that. So it's a wonderful poem, very much autobiographical. How do the images of grindstone and brass figurines conjure up the world of the grand grandmother? Okay, the images of grindstone and brass figurine, etc. conjure up uh, uh, the world of the grandmother. So as a child or as a a baby or as a, as a maybe as a uh, boy of course we have a lot of uh, curiosity we are curious to know some what is what and what is this a lot of questions right so the person who can answer our questions is our grandparents so we we look at our grandparents with a lot of respect reverence and uh, ad we admire them because they have a lot of things. Everything is theirs. The house is theirs. The grindstone is theirs. All the statues is theirs. They go to the temple. They pray in. They pray in front of uh, all these, and they say a lot of prayers again. They have a lot of devotional prayers, and their prayers could be in Sanskrit sometimes. Maybe we don't understand. Children do not understand all the words the grandparents utter. So we know that the grandparent has a. A magical world. He can do a lot of miracles. All right, like uh, his cooking style, grandparents, grandma's cooking. All right, they do a lot of miracles, right? Because uh, to a child, whatever the grandparents do or say is a miracle. All the stories, all the prayers, all the cooking, all the farming. You plant a seed. After some time, you have, of course, a a plant there. The plant, of course, uh, is just. Uh, growing up, blooming, flowers, seeds, fruits. So, uh, so because of that reason, and you, you have a lot of things there. So, uh, grandparents or grandma is just like uh, a, a person or a, a deity, right? A lot of mystery, a lot of magical. So, very successfully and vividly, the point is uh, creating the uh, world of grandmother, conjuring up the world of grandmother through the images, grindstone, grass, figurines, etc. How does the poet look at the passage of time? The poet Dilip Chitra looks at the passage of time nostalgically. Beginning line one to line end poem we have nostalgia. Say he remembers uh, the house of his childhood. I wish to be a child again. I wish to live in my house of uh, my childhood. Okay, so longing nostalgically and yeah, he wants to feel those trees, plants, birds, butterflies. He wants to listen to his grandma. He wants to, of course, taste uh, some food that uh, his grandma made. But there is just emptiness everywhere. All right, so very, very, and, and now the passage of time is referred to by grey hill, crack, colourless cracks, death of all birds, grandmother's voice on a bare branch. Everything is very vividly presented and the poem is about the positive time. Now discuss the theme of the poem, essay question. Yes, as we all know, uh, Dilip Chitre often writes about uh, the very realities of life obsessions. He is obsessed with life, madness and death and this poem is about the loss of childhood. It's about the loss of child, childhood. It's about the reality of growth. It's about the reality of uh, old age and uh, it's about of course uh, the very different uh, uh, experiences uh, we have in our life. It's about different uh, maybe uh, uh, stages of our life like birth, like boyhood days, like adulthood days, youthful days, middle age days, the old age and uh, different experiences we undergo. Okay, so we are never content or satisfied. Maybe we are content when we are children. 
because we have no border regions. But as we grow up, we have a lot of border regions. So the theme of the poem is different stages of life and the loss of the experience, the loss of childhood days and uh, all. So nostalgia, people have uh, nostalgia. So whoever lived his life, later stage, when looks back, he will look back with uh, uh, a yearning for all that is lost. And that yearning for the lost times and ages and experiences is the theme of uh, it. This is about the reality of life. The poem is about the reality of life. It's about birth, it's about growth, it's about death. What picture of grandmother do you get from the poem? In fact, the poem uh, brings a very vivid picture of a wonderful grandmother. Wonderful grandmother in the sense that we have a loving, kind-hearted, uh, always uh, working uh, uh, or very devotional, pious, sincere, committed grandmother. The ancestral home is equal to grandmother. That, that is more than enough. Whatever the ancestral home is grandma because you have uh, the grindstone used by grandma. Grandma can do make a lot of things from the grindstone. Every uh, uh, room has the smell of grandma. Every room has the sound of grandma. Even the outside, outside you have the front yard, the backyard and the bare branches of the tree can speak in the voice of grandma. So this is a grandma who is very loving, who is very kind-hearted, dedicated, committed, caring for others, always hopeful, prayerful, praying. Okay, so the poet successfully asserts or establishes or substantiates the fact that relationships are important. We need to have, of course, the affection, love and care of the grandparents, right? So everyone is a child all the time. You could be three years right now, 30 years later, 70 years later, still that child is still in you. And you, maybe when you are 70 years or 80 years, you could be an old man, you could be a grandpa yourself. Still, you wish to have the love and affection of your grandpa. That is the grandpa or grandma. That is the reality of life. So, very wonderful image of grandma, uh, picture of grandma we get from this poem. Very uh, uh, kind-hearted, moving all around, just living her life for others. It's because grandma lived her life for the other members of the family that poet is one of the members, he remembers her so much. Right? So it's a beautiful poem and uh, with that we come to the end of the discussion of the poem The House of My Childhood of Dilip Chitre. Listen to all uh, that uh, we discussed here. Listen again and again. Write down the uh, important ideas we discussed, the questions answers and ensure that we know everything about this wonderful poem. This is in fact a, a, a confessional poem in which you confess whatever experience you had. Okay, so wish you all the best. May God bless you. Thank you.